I don't like to cry uncle that it's because I was a woman, but it was because I was a woman. Are they charging you less money for them to be able to uh, take out their crap on you? I said, oh, I leased a Porsche. He said, what? A Porsche? <laughs> I said, yes. He said, well, I didn't know you were going to get a Porsche. I said, well, I'm not sure. What did you need to know? <laughs> and all that was going through my head is, it hurts like hell now, but just let it hurt because it's going to be okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Silver and Sensational, the show where we help women like yourself live their most self-sufficient and empowered lives. I'm Jessica Lynn Verde, and our magnanimous host is Lois Mills. Hello, everyone. It is I. I could either call myself Lois or The Low. The Low. And welcome, and thank you so much for tuning in. So last week, Lois and I talked all about what Lois isn't kicking herself for not having done, but kind of mm. some things she might have wished she had done differently in life so as to better pave her experience at your current stage of life, Lois, yeah. in yeah. hopes of giving you advice out there, our wonderful viewer and listener, so that you can start taking steps today to enrich your later stages of life. So today, we're kind of taking that idea and morphing it a little bit and specifically giving words of advice to live by. Um, things that someone like myself would benefit from learning now in terms of like how to look at life and how to move through life. Would you say that that's kind of what we're up to today, Lois? I think so. I mean, I don't mean to be presumptuous to tell you what you should do, but I'm going to just share with you what my life has taught me that I wish I had known, certainly, uh, you know, 35, 40, when you are really hitting your stride and life starts to take over. I think there's some things that I can feel confident that I've got the hang of, as a close to 40-year-old woman, at 30, I felt like I really rounded a corner of maturity. Still had some, like, early 20s bad behaviors to wean off of. Mm -hmm. um, but, but the same is true now, where, like, I kind of want to leave some of my 30-year-old pattern behind, but I'm not quite ready. And, and I kind of want to achieve the mindset of someone who's got more maturity and life experience, but I don't know where to get it. So I'm getting it from you today. And I am very pleased to offer what I have learned. If you're watching us on YouTube, now's a good time to click like and subscribe and the little bell if you want to be notified whenever an episode goes live. If you're listening to us on the podcast world, uh, leave a review wherever you're listening. Let me start by saying words to live by. Um, you know, we often think that when something bad happens to us, it's the end of the world. Sure. Let me tell you, the only thing that's the end of the world is the end of the world. And along those lines, you know, I need to remind myself, and I'm suggesting this for you, that, you know, nothing lasts forever. Neither the bad nor the good. Mm. So when the good is happening, enjoy it. Don't start thinking about the what ifs. Just enjoy what's happening. And when things are bad, understand that it is not going to last forever. I've just heard, I've heard this in a couple different ways, Lois, and I think it's such a good reminder. But someone said, don't push away joy because you feel like you're not ready. Joy comes in those unexpected <laughs> moments. And it's not, it's going to be, there's not going to be joy at the end of the road if you've been pushing it away every single day, thinking you're not ready for it. Wow. Okay. I don't think I was ever not ready for a little bit of joy. <laughs> sure. But if it, that resonated um, with me, then, you know, I'm happy that you are understanding that you must grab on to those moments in life 
that bring you joy, that make you smile, that you can plant in in your memory bank is a is a wonderful memory. As something that is happening now and you can accept it and not hold on to it and go, oh my God, it's going away. No, it it listen, as I've just said, nothing lasts forever, neither the bad nor the good. Second uh, words to live by is don't stay in a bad relationship. Mm. You know, it does nothing but erode your spirit and your sense of self. I mean, in the years, not days, not months, years it takes to move beyond that are years that are so wasted. So now let's figure this out. You've spent seven years in a bad relationship Uh and 10 years to get over it. Hey, (sighs) I'm sorry, you said what? Yeah. You see what I'm saying, you know? So if you don't stay in that bad relationship, long enough for it to erode who you are and your joie de vivre, get out. Wow. As hard as it's going to be, and it will be hard, think about how long it's going to take you to move beyond this and how it's going to affect your future relationships because you have been deeply damaged. Wow, wow. The next one is something that people, one one friend in particular used to say to me, why do you just believe your bad press? <laughs> oh, that is so good. Yeah, yeah. And it was so true. I mean, I could walk in a room and 10 people that I know will look delighted to see me, and the one bitch in the corner is sneering, and I'm going to focus on that. Of course you are. Lois, it's the internet now too, right? You got one bad comment after a slew of, I love this show, and da 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 whatever, (laughs) and and you're still lying awake thinking about it, even after you came back with the comeback, you know? Oh, 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 I did. It's just because I just thought of this. Because I hadn't really equated it with our show in the comments. Sure. But you know, I can't even remember when this was. Somebody commented, what's with the mustache? (sighs) And I mean, I don't have any hair around my mouth. I don't have hair on my face. Sure. Where the hell does that come from? And then, for... I don't know how. I never understood it either. Well, guess what it was. I don't want to know, I don't think. Oh, no, you have to because (laughs) I thought, Jesus Christ, you know. Sure. What it was, was I had dabbed some cream here to try to ease some of the wrinkles. Oh, my. And I guess because I'm not using foundation. I guess that with the lighting, it emphasized the white. And because it, you know, it was like way up here. (laughs) So to whoever sent what's with the mustache, thank you. Because I I now realize I can't do that anymore. Holy moly. Yeah. That's some keen eyes, you know. Oh, tell me. And, but anyway... Getting back to what I was saying is, you know, the internet and if a lot of you go on it and post a lot of things, you know, there's a lot of haters out there. So either ease back on what you're posting or develop a tougher skin. You know, I I would offer this too, because it's just something I'm working on, um, I want to post snarky things on other people's, com- you know, comments, and I want to get involved in the debate. And, you know, it actually makes me feel worse when I've engaged negatively. So e- even though there are always going to be people that are negatively commenting that are going to, like you said, 
Don't focus on the bad press. Don't put the bad press out there, too, if you can help it. You're not changing the world with the one snarky comment that someone's going to read today. Absolutely. You know, um, I, you, you know, I'm not somebody who is afraid of confrontation, but, you know, choose your battles wisely. There you go. Love I that. I mean, some anonymous person giving you snark on an anonymous platform and you're going to waste your time. Right. I I have to st- stop myself from doing it. I mean, the habit is m- I'm much less inclined to do it now that I have actively practiced against my inclination. Mm-hmm. Um, but but we always feel this need to retaliate, you know. Uh, and and so yes, I think this is good advice on both sides. Don't yeah. only listen to the good press. Take in the compliment. You're good. If you're someone who needs the compliment, which we all do, we all want some to hear something nice from somebody. There's a reason we focus on the negative comment or the negative attitude of somebody. It's because it makes us feel like we're ostracized. It makes us feel like we're outside of the pack. It it brings up primal feelings for us. There's so many more positive reinforcements in your life than unlucky Lucy, who's just a goddamn bitch. And you don't need to comment on Lucy's page to also make her feel bad. Yeah. Well, it, it's not even to make her, whether you're making her feel bad or not in my book. For me, it's, I don't want to engage with you. Yes. End of story. Love that. End of story. I think that that's why I love it for both of those. You, you do not need to retaliate on one way or another and let that person be there with their opinions. I love that, Lois. Yeah. And if it gets really nasty, yep. block them. So let's deep dive into a couple of the stuff, the things that you're talking about um, with these words to live by um, and some experiences you've had. So I, I kind of want to talk about like leaving the bad relationship uh, as someone who uh, spent a couple of years with the wrong guy. I knew he mm-hmm. was the wrong guy the moment he walked in the door and I was going to, I ruined relationships over trying to be with the wrong guy. I, I stayed in a situation, it, not even just with him, but in a life situation so that I could be closer to him and, and, and really put breaks on my life. And then it took five years to get over him, only for me to go try and sleep with him again. <laughs> like, it, I, I knew I needed to get out of that relationship, still couldn't, couldn't do it emotionally. So I wanted to kind of, kind of deep dive into that thought there. Well, I can only tell you that <laughs> I am cut from the same cloth. Right. And... So how do you, how do you leave? How do you leave if? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. I was able to leave the first one, but I left him at a time that I was in, uh, gee, I don't even know what you would call it, but my father was dying of cancer. I watched him die and it just put me in a tailspin that all I wanted to do was just get rid of everything in my life. I see. And so I'm not sure that if my dad hadn't passed away when he did, that I wouldn't have stayed in that abusive relationship a lot longer. When it came to the other long-term live-in relationships, I can tell you this, I knew this, the second one, uh, probably within the first three or four years, that this really wasn't a relationship that I was happy in. And I made all kinds of excuses to stay in it. And I mean, it, it wasn't, you know, I was used to uh, in your face kind of abuse. This was more of a manipulating, gaslighting, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't see what was going on, that I would have been justified. But no, I kept thinking about how much better he was than the first one. Right. As, wow. as it turned out, he left me. 
That's who left me for another Lois. Yes. If you want to learn more about these stories, uh, get get to our first episode, Getting oh, yeah. to Know the Low. It's getting a great, to Know the Low. It's yeah, a good it, episode. I hang it all out. And then the last one that, as you, um, I saw it coming on the second date. Please. I, 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 I can't even... I should be so embarrassed to even say this. So on the second date, it and this relationship went on. I never married, but I lived with him for over seven years, and mm. it became worse and worse and worse. And you know what? He ended up leaving me this time for a golf course. So I am wow. saying to you that... Bite the bullet. If your difficulties can't be worked out, you know, and you are unhappy, and you have uh, given everything you think you need to give to make a relationship work, and you see that either he's not doing that, or maybe he's just not capable of it, but in any event, stop psychoanalyzing them. This was another thing. Oh, he was this way because of such and such. A... Stop it. That's for his shrink to do. You don't need to do that because I can bear guarantee you that he's not doing that about you. You do something wrong, oh end of story. Oh, my God. I didn't even flip it like that. Lois, I literally diagnosed my second oh. Boyfriend oh. Oh. on the internet with borderline personality disorder. Oh my I, and then I said I could be his emotional character. Do you think he did that for me? Oh my God, Lois. I, I, I mean, wow. you're singing to the choir. Wow. I am saying to all you people out there, women and men, if you're listening, bite the bullet and get out. Wow. Wow. Because guess what? You're going to survive and you will probably even thrive. Women have this ability to thrive after a relationship, whether it's in spite or to deal with the pain. Men tend to not do well after relationships. It, you know, they, they, I saw a great meme that was like men two days after the relationship, they're like hanging out with other chicks, they're hanging out with their guys, they're doing well, the they, best. It, because they replace people, see? Totally. And the woman's crying, right? And the woman's on the bed and eating ice cream and wallowing. Ten months later, that woman's 15 pounds lighter. She's doing better in her career. She's on to the new man. Or what, you know, like an exaggeration of time, perhaps. The man's not doing well ten months later because they didn't deal with their emotions. I'm not saying that's what they deserve. I'm just saying we have a, the ability to transmute a situation to the best if we get the obstacles out of the way. I can... I can. I can share a memory I have when my husband said he wanted to pursue a more meaningful relationship and therefore <sighs> wanted a divorce. And I can remember being on the sofa in my office in a fetal position. And all that was going through my head is, it hurts like hell now. But just let it hurt because it's going to be okay. Wow. Now, it took me five years. Make no mistake, there was nothing cavalier about my recovery. And that brings me to the next topic. Wow. Take better care of yourself. Because I let my emotions so overtake my entire being and the stress, but more than the stress was the deep, deep, deep depression that completely affected my physical health. And I blame it for the reason that I had an autoimmune deficiency disease that led to my massive heart attack. So when I say to women, and I see what they're going through, and I beg them not to do it. It's, it, it's, it's really not just talk. 
it's the real deal. They, I think they have officially linked stress as the primary source of, or causation of most illnesses. I did read that both in Eastern and Western medicine, it is believed that long periods of stress or deep depression lead to autoimmune deficiency diseases. Wow. I have not heard that before. And I know that, you know, your heart attack came as a shock physically and and and, and more so because you were healthy. You yeah. were you worked out every day and <laughs> and we're no strangers to the stories of the, you know, the Olympic runner who died of a massive heart attack. Like this this is not it's not impossible for that to happen. But you were doing everything you can to prevent a physical issue with your life and it came came chasing well, you. Well, see, the thing that, uh, and I don't want to dwell on this, but uh, shortly after um, he left, I became uh, began having issues with my joints. Wow. And, um, you know, went to all kinds of doctors. No one could put, uh, could put a label on it. And then I started having these, which is why you see this tiny scar here. I would have these lesions uh, that would pop up oh, on my Lois. face, and um, they diagnosed it as um, discoid lupus. And as it turned out, and I'll just briefly touch on this, um, I found out only after you know the heart attack, um, and was um, given to see a rheumatologist in addition to a cardiologist that. I had this, um, it's called IgG4, and as the rheumatologist said to me, you know, listen, 20 years ago, they didn't even know what this was. Wow. So there were all kinds of symptoms that I dealt with after he left, I which see. were not there before. Wow. So I am really adamant about impressing upon all of all the people I meet th that if they're having difficulty to, I mean, I saw shrinks. It isn't that, you know, but I just kept beating myself and beating myself and beating myself that I, um, I basically, what I always feel is that I have done this. I did this to myself. Sure. Um, I think some. I've heard. I've heard other people with lifelong illnesses or illnesses brought on suddenly feel like when when they've done the reflection that they caused it. That doesn't. We're not suggesting here for a second that some people aren't just sick or that there aren't things. No, no, but there are. Not. There's studies that link. Um, situations, Ill sicknesses, tummy aches to direct causes in your life. Um, I, I, my point being, I try to remind myself whenever I feel stress percolate that it's not worth what it's going to do to my body later to feel the stress now. So how can I reduce it as much as possible? Good. I think that's wonderful advice, Lois. Ah, something I really didn't do to the extent that I should have, uh, is that, you know, have those uncomfortable, uh, maybe difficult conversations with people who are not treating you with dignity and respect. This is a hard one to learn, Lois. I don't like to cry, uncle, that it's because I was a woman, but it was because I was a woman that Lawyers and accountants and other professional people I dealt with, um, they really didn't do right by me in many ways. Um, I remember I, I had my studio and I called my accountant and I said, you know, should I lease a car? Or should I buy a car? He said, oh, no, no, go ahead and lease a car. And I said, okay. And so um, I did. And I called him to ask him how to set it, you know, how to set things up on the books. 
And he said, well, what did you, what did you lease? I said, oh, I leased a Porsche. He said, what? A Porsche? <laughs> I said, yes. He said, well, I didn't know you were going to get a Porsche. I said, well, I'm not sure. What did you need to know? Are you? <laughs> I said, I have no expenses in my life whatsoever. Are you telling me I cannot afford $565 a month? And you know, of course he could not say I couldn't afford that. Of course not. It would be ludicrous. So what did I was started thinking? Oh, I see. You're thinking, why should she have a Porsche? And I don't. And I saw a great deal of this. Wow, Lois. In, in so many situations. And you know, right then and there, I should have said, you know, Richard, maybe, maybe you might want to rethink your advice to me. And then if I didn't see a change in behavior or attitude or even comments, I should have just found somebody else and let them go. Wow. And I say, you know, especially ladies, especially ladies, don't, don't stay with anyone who is not treating you with the dignity and respect that you deserve. I mean, really, are they... Are they not charging you? Are they charging you less money for them to be able to uh, take out their crap on you? So think about that. And that is something I, you know, also feel that uh, that's the advice I would have given to my 40-year-old self. I think it's great. Uh I don't look for when someone's treating me differently and it's affecting me negatively. So I have to be better at going, wait, I don't really like that. Or that seems really unusual. Kind of what you did. You're going to have to speak to me differently. You, you, uh, to use a sort of incorrect term, you were really shrewd about how you were being treated and you had corrected the problem. I might not have been as quick to solve the problem. I might have walked away confused or hurt. I'm just so impressed and I want to learn how to do that and and even just challenge somebody like, well, what do you mean I can't buy a Porsche? Where's that coming from? Is that what I pay you for? You know? Well, there's, you know, there's steps that you take depending on what the response is. Sure. You know, I guess so, I just want to be on the lookout for someone treating me differently. How, but I do want to trust that part of my heart that or that gut reaction. Which oh, you'll to, know. You'll you know, know what I mean. I it think doesn't you do. feel right. It yes. doesn't feel right. That's right. You and know, you know, we know these things, yes. but unfortunately, we do not trust our guts enough. And you know, men don't apologize for accusing somebody for treating them poorly there's we instead i'll go i'm so sorry but like what is this or or i'll feel bad when they gaslight me and tell me that that wasn't the situation or i'm reading it incorrectly and men will just shoot from the hip and say something and get the reaction that they want no, this is something that women do a lot women do a lot of i'm sorry right i'm sorry i'm sorry i mean i see when i write you know when i think I have to go back to somebody the second time to get something clarified. Uh, okay. I just Oh my God, I yes. I just reread an email I sent to one of my doctors. And it started out, I'm sorry to bother you again, but I was confused about your instructions. Now this is you know, this this is a very valid thing to question. And yet I felt inclined at this stage in my life to say, I'm sorry to bother you. So if I, I hope that before my next birthday, and I have some eight months, that I can uh, get the I'm sorry out of my, I mean, I use it almost the same as I would say, hello, how are you? It's like, I'm sorry, but... I'm sorry. So I can't, I just don't want to do that anymore. Anyway, on to the next, huh, Jessica? Yes. Well, this is one. 
My God, I hope you're doing already. But if you aren't, please remove yourself from toxic people as soon as you recognize the users, the manipulators, and the abusers on any level, on any level, from any sex at any time. As soon as you see it, stop. Yeah. Now, I did something that I, I don't know if other people have done it, but, you know, I would stay with these people until such time that I couldn't stand it anymore, and then I would just, boom, kept myself off entirely. Right. And you shared that um, you, you were so done with your first husband by the time you knew your father was sick and you gave him the time. Like, sometimes these major life events kind of, or 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 you're fed up and you and you're ready to walk and and it's there's no going back. Yeah. Well, but it also I did it a lot with friends. Wow. See, you know, if if you are a giver, you know, users have those antennae. Oh, they can find the givers. And I really pose to you the challenge of finding two users who are together. Oh, my goodness gracious. You may see two givers, but you'll never see two users. So, wow. you know, I would stay and then, you know, I would let all this stuff build up, you know, never confront them or address it, and then realize I just can't take them anymore. Boom. Well... Age does have its advantages. And one of the things I have learned to do, and if you're a friend watching me, no, it's not you. <laughs> what I have learned to do is if I see something about someone that... Uh, I feel, you know, I am being used for or manipulated. Mm, I don't I don't even let abusers get anywhere close enough to do it more than one time. Yeah. So what I do now is I sit back and I think, what do I get from this person? Um, you know, what do they bring to the table? If they don't bring a whole lot, but there's something about them that I like or I can relate to, but I know I know what they're I know what they're doing. Yeah, I just keep them on a very outside circle. Yes, you see. So the conversation, as soon as I realize who and what they are. The conversation no longer is on a very personal level where we talk about how oh, food, restaurants, you know, that sort of thing. Wow. I don't, I don't really share a lot of personal things. And this way, um, I feel I am protecting myself. And, and I really had an issue with that, um, so much so that one of my shrinks one day said to me, Lois... You really need to learn how to protect yourself. Wow. And so, you know, I have find, you know, because I was always like, what you see is what you get. And, um, you know, I, there was, there was no game playing with me. So I really didn't know how to, I really just let them do what they needed to do. So I am much better about that. And, uh, actually I think I've come, uh, a, a good way about it. So, you know, learn that you don't need to eradicate these people right. from your life. Um, you can put them in a different category. And Not so, everyone can be everything to you. No. And once no. someone shows you what kind of person they are going to be, 
to you. That's how where how how you know how to cor- categorize them. You know. That's right. That's right. Next, hang in there and go the full round to keep what or get what you believe is rightfully yours. Yeah, explain this a little bit more to me. Well, you know, because at certain times in my life, I think it was more important or I made it more important for me to look like I didn't need to. That was pride Mm. or felt I wasn't capable of fighting for it. And I would throw in the towel. Wow. If given a really difficult situation. Or or met resistance. Yeah. Or if people started getting ugly, I'd say, you know what? I don't need that job. You'd bow out, yeah. I would bow out. And it isn't that I lost so much, because eh, I really didn't in the end. But what I did lose is the feeling that I let somebody take advantage of me. Wow. That someone else won or... or Well, it wasn't even winning or losing. It's that I knew that they did not... They didn't have the right to do what they were doing or they didn't have the right to be taking ownership of what they were taking ownership of. Mm. But rather than go in there and say, hey, this is mine, it belongs to me, and I'm not going to give it to you. That's what I mean by that. I, I, I think there's got to be a healthy balance of knowing when to, to fold them and when to hold them, oh, right? you that's, got it. That's, exactly. That's what it sounds like to me. That's exactly right. And I was too quick to fold them. I see. So no... When to hold them and know when to fold them. Because knowing and... when to leave a thing, a relationship, a project. It was actually John mm-hmm. Malkovich. Um, I saw it. I think he's in. A, he's a, he's the owner of a theater on Broadway, and I think is a quote on the wall there, and it's never left me. It's leave at a certain point. If a pro- if a project's not done, you don't have to see the project all the way through. If you need to move on. So knowing when to fold a project or your involvement in something is just as important, Lois. But I think that's right. There are a couple times in our life where Susie's just a little more mean and she's edging you out. But then Susie got the thing you wanted. So you got to stick it in. You got you to gotta, you gotta see it yeah. through sometimes. Yeah. For yourself. Again, it is for making or uh, yourself feel like you took care of yourself. Wow. I think that's great advice. Okay. And now we go on to friends. So firstly, I would say, you know, cultivate friends who are as interested in having you as a friend as you are them. You are investing in this friendship as much as they are investing. You have to be judicious in choosing people. And because you're going to be sharing your uh, precious time and energy. And it should be with the right people for the right reasons. Not everyone is for you throughout a lifetime. It just sometimes, it just doesn't work out to be that way. So, you know, I have one friendship that is 60 years old, another wow. one that's almost 40 years old, 30, 35 years old. Uh, I had one that was 32 years old, and I removed myself from it. Wow. Yeah. So it's not always something that is bad because sometimes some people are very good for you at a certain time in your life, and then they're not. And knowing when to move on, I think, is it? Knowing when to hold them and knowing when to fold them. I think that's a huge takeaway from today, Lois. I yes. Think, I think another thing I'm taking away as well is I I have to be my number one champion in all things and allow myself to do the things I need to do to be healthy, happy, and well. Um, you bet you, kid. So thank you for sharing 
you. what you've learned ah. and it's washing over me and making me feel so ready to and, attack and anything. And I hope, I hope some of you out there have, uh, have enjoyed and have maybe take able to take away something from today's show and... Jessica, where are we? Well, we're tor- we're at the end of our program. We want to thank you so much for watching and listening. If you have a question for Lo that you you are burning to ask after listening and watching this program, you can get a hold of us in all sorts of ways. You could email us at silverinsational at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook, on Instagram, and now we're on TikTok, all at Silver and Sensational. And if they're watching us on YouTube, Lois, what should they do? If you're new to the program, you want to subscribe. And if you're not, hit like, share it with your friends, and push the little bell notification that'll let you know we're back on. And actually, we do drop a new episode every Friday, but it's not bad to be reminded. So, Jessica, thank you so much for today. You were just great, as always, my co-host, my producer, and one of my favorite people. Well, the feeling is more than mutual, Lois. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We loved being with you, and we'll say goodbye until the next time. Bye. Bye now. Thanks so much for watching us today, and please hit like, subscribe, and do share us with your friends. And again, we love having you as our audience. Stay with us. See us every Friday for a new episode. Bye.